Hi again then guys, and so it's that time again to take a look at the newest update in GT Sport, give my first impressions, initial thoughts, take maybe for some people a first look at some of these vehicles if you haven't been keeping up with trailers and that kind of stuff, but First of all, let's get the major thing out of the way. Of course, there is no Laguna Seca. I was holding out some hope that it may arrive with the Hamilton DLC if that was separate to the primary update. It kind of is separate, incidentally. It comes with it, but you have to pay to access it, so it is still kind of a separate thing. But no, Laguna Seca is not in the game. It has not arrived. Contrary to what the PlayStation channel put in their description about it dropping on the 28th last week. So that was false for whatever reason. Laguna Seca has not arrived. With that being said though, what is in this update? Beyond, of course, the five cars. Well, we also have the Hamilton Paid DLC, which I have purchased. I have not completed or even attempted any of them at the time of releasing this video. So for those who are perhaps wondering, yes, I am going to be doing those. As I said, I've already downloaded it, but I'll probably make that as one long video, tackling every single one of them, and then, you know, see how I do. I don't actually expect to beat any of his times, but, you know, why not? Let's give it a go anyway. If for nothing else, just to cover it, to show people who may be interested in buying it what you're up against. Now, as far as what we do have in the standard 1.50 update, we have, of course, the primary five vehicles that we've been looking forward to. The Jaguar, which we've known about for a little while, and for those who don't know how I do these reviews, I'll give my brief thoughts on each car, but then we'll get more into them in the coming couple of days on the channel, where I'll do full reviews of the cars one at a time. And then of course once that's done we can move into the tuning side of things and then take it from there. So first up the Jaguar. The Jaguar is a million credits and incidentally this entire update will cost you about 1.8 million. You're looking at a million credits as I said for the Jag which of course is no surprise for a Vision GT car. It is in Group X. The specs are good. It's got over a thousand horsepower. The torque though is strangely low. 295 pound feet which is kind of weird especially for an electric vehicle or a hybrid of any kind really. It weighs 1400 kilos, which is pretty good, but I will say, brace yourself <laughs> for this car, because it ain't forgiving, that's for sure. It's extremely heavy under acceleration, and the e-brake, which I tried to use on one of the corners here at Spa, in fact the opening hairpin, the handbrake, or the e-brake, seems to lock the front wheels rather than the rear. So don't hope to do any drifting in this thing unless you adjust the brake balance because it locks up the front wheels and makes the car pull in a straight line like a front wheel drive car sometimes feels, which is strange. When it comes to performance, of course it's fast, it looks fantastic, it's a matter of preference really, but I will say the biggest disappointment about the Jaguar for me is the brakes. They are simply awful. The car is not particularly heavy, it's far from being the fastest thing in the game, and even other actual street cars in this update, the roof even, for example, has much better brakes than this Jag does, and that's despite the fact that the Jag has a very fancy looking picnic table sized rear wing to act as a huge air brake, and even with that, it just doesn't slow down that well, which is kind of weird, especially when these cars don't technically have to follow the laws of physics. They follow in-game physics, but you can make the car as wacky as you want, so why wouldn't you make it OP? It's not like anyone would care if the car was too good anyway. So that was a strange choice, but of course the Vision GTs are all over the place for many people anyway, and again we'll get into that more in its review. As far as my favourite car of the update by far, and also my most anticipated, and a kind of a big deal because it's Roof returning to the game, the Roof CTR3. This is a serious contender, it's a beyond Beyond, in fact, a Porsche Carrera GT level machine, even though many people would probably choose that over this car. There's a lot of similar vibes, it's mid-engine instead of rear-engine, unlike most Porsche 911s are, and this is kind of like the Hennessy Venom GT in some ways, not just the active wing and the overall shape, but also it's a misunderstood car by some people. The Hennessy Venom is often thought of as being a modified Lotus. It's not. It only has the roof and doors of a Lotus, everything else is made by Hennessy. Likewise with this roof, people think, oh, it's just a, a slightly chop-topped Porsche 911 with a ducktail wing and more power. It's not. It's a, a ground-up supercar. And I have to say, it handles and performs exactly as you would want it to. Now, if you looked at the bottom of the screen when I started driving it, you'll notice that the Milo said zero. I'd done no driving in this car at all. It's not tuned. It's running on sports soft tires on the Nordschleife. And as you can see, 
it's Larry. <laughs> this car loves to slide around. It's got a lot of that Porsche traditional twitchiness, which you would think of from like the 80s and 90s 911 turbos, but even roofs as well. And I will say that of course, being in the CTR lineage, the original CTR being, of course, the iconic yellow bird, then the CTR2, which is always one of the fastest cars in Gran Turismo, and then this one, which is so much crazier than the others, it still manages to have that authentic roof feel. It's no way near as OP as the Porsches are, in terms of the handling in particular, but at the same time, this is a rapid car. It's 600 grand, which is roughly what I was expecting. I was expecting somewhere between 500 and 650,000. It's an appropriate price for the car. And it is N700. It's got just under 700 horses, but curiously, and this is unfortunate, you cannot upgrade the power, which is strange. I mean, it's not like you couldn't do that in real life, Roof themselves did. They made a more powerful version called the Club Sport. So that's kind of odd. You can increase the power a little bit on the slider, but you cannot actually upgrade it to a new level. And I think that's a shame because this car has so much more to give. You can feel that. I haven't tested its top speed yet, but I'm expecting it to be good because of course, if they want to be realistic, it should do at least 235 miles an hour because that's how quick it is in real life. But that remains to be seen. Overall, as I said, my favorite car of the pack for sure. Next up, we have the RE Amemaya FD3S RX7. More of a street car than we often think of RE Amemaya's as being. Most of their Super GT machines get most of the attention. And I must admit, for me, that's definitely the case. I had totally forgotten that this car was even a thing. <laughs> I barely used it in GT6 beyond reviewing it. It wasn't a bad car, I just prefer the normal RX7. The curious thing about this one is it is an N-Class car. It's an N400, and you can detune the power as well. So I fully see this being a very OP vehicle, easily a rival to stuff like Porsche 911s in those categories. Would not at all surprise me if it ends up being one of the quickest N-Class cars in those categories as a track car, not a straight line machine, of course. And in terms of pricing, you're looking at 100 grand, which is reasonable. That's again, a lot cheaper than its equivalent 911, for example. The next car is of course, another hotly anticipated one. Very, very many requests for this. It's almost like the Euro equivalent of a JDM car in terms of the fanboys who want it. The BMW M3, the E46 shape in particular. Of course, one of the most iconic uses of gold on any car, Phoenix Gelb, and also, of course, being the hero car of Need for Speed Most Wanted, in the GTR form at least, makes it kind of famous. <laughs> and it's a great car in the game. I'm not a fan of the E46 in real life. I particularly don't like the way they sound. They kind of remind me of the early 2000s Porsche Boxsters, which I do not like the sound of at all. I think they sound very tinny and high pitched. This one still kind of sounds like that in the game. It's kind of a, it's not, it's not high pitched, but I think you know what I mean. It sounds almost like it's got a, a hair dryer note in there. And I know that's sacrilege to M3 fans, but beyond the sound, it's a great car. <laughs> the handling is fantastic. Of course, it's a great driver's car because all M3s are designed to be, and the performance is good. And you can tune it quite a bit. You can tune it up, you can tune it down. And again, it's gonna be a car that I think a lot of people get a ton of use out of. Again, I'm driving it completely stock, apart from just swapping the tires out to sports softs instead of sports hards. And even so, I expected it to be pretty tail happy. And it's gonna be a lot of people's drift car of choice, I think. But surprisingly in stock form, it doesn't actually want to drift. It's got quite a lot of grip and it feels really good through corners. So I think if you were looking forward to an M3 coming back of this generation, you're gonna like it. And we've got a pretty nice selection of M3s now. Of course, there's the obvious lack of an E36 for many people, but we do have the E30, E46, and the E92, so even if it did end up just being those, that's still a pretty nice trio to have. And of course last, and in my opinion least, the Toyota 86, the facelifted version. Of course it's gonna be in there because it's Toyota, blah blah blah, it's Gran Turismo. In terms of the spec, it's slightly improved, still N200, 204 horsepower, the weight is roughly the same, 1240 kilos, which funnily enough is the exact same weight as the RE Amami RX-7. There's actually a couple of cars in this pack which are similar to each other. The Jaguar Vision GT weighs the same as the roof as well, 1400 kilos. This one, as I said, 1240. It's still cheap, thankfully, 32 grand. And incidentally, the Beamer is 84,000 credits, so it's not too expensive. Unfortunately though, it means you cannot use that for Blue Moon Bay, in case you were wondering. I do have some hope for the roof though. That might be pretty good. 
Overall, my thoughts are fairly simple on the vehicles. I know which ones I like, I know which ones I'm not a huge fan of, and even the ones that I'm not a huge fan of, they're still pretty good. The 86 and the Beamer in particular are my least interested in the pack, but they still handle extremely well. The RE Amamiya is only one of my preferred because it's based on the FD and I'm a big fan of that. That, again, fantastic track car. The roof is easily my favourite, it's the standout for me. Overwhelmingly fast, larry through corners just like it should be, and it looks stunning. Plus it's really cool to have a unicorn supercar like that in the game, because there are so few games to feature it. Of course, one of the other occasions was Driver San Francisco, which is such a random game to see it show up in, and it was great there as well. And of course the Jaguar, which will definitely divide opinion, because it's fast, but it's a bit cumbersome, to be honest, through corners. Overall then, that's it for my thoughts on the new update. Of course, tell me yours down below, and as I said, stick around on the channel for a number of reasons in general, including news and leaks, but also especially in the coming days, because I will be doing an individual breakdown of every single car, tuning whichever ones we can tune, not the Jag, of course, because you can't tune that car, and I will be, as I said, doing a full video of my attempts at the Hamilton challenges. Not every single run I do, but probably just the best results I get. So stick around for all of that stuff, and of course I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.